Good afternoon. My name is Candace Moore, spelled C A N D A C E M O O R E. I'm a staff attorney with the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, and I work on our Education Equity Project. At 2.30 this afternoon, attorneys from our team will begin presenting oral arguments for a motion we filed along with our partners LAF and Imer Stahl to keep Chicago public schools from closing National Teachers Academy, better known as NTA. Why did we file this lawsuit? In a word, discrimination. That's right. Yes. Access to free, quality education is a civil right. There is simply no good reason for CPS to close an elementary school that is performing at the highest possible academic level by CPS's own standards. There is no good reason to shut down a school if it is using its facilities with maximal efficiency, as CPS determined in 2017. There is no justification for displacing students who are majority black and low income, the very kids who need and deserve a leg up in our city, and displacing them for the second or the third, or the fourth time That's in their right. young lives. That's, right. That's why before NTA, CPS has actually never closed or never proposed to close a level one plus school or an efficiently utilized school. So why do this now? Instead of giving us a good reason to close this predominantly black school, CPS used a metric that is racially discriminatory. It violated the law and it violated its own guidelines for school action. And the result, if it's allowed to move forward, will be serious academic and social damage to the children and families of NTA. What we fear beyond this case is that CPS will go back to this playbook to close more schools and what it deems, schools that it deems inconvenient and, or in its way. That it will again refuse to consider good alternatives or listen to community members. Unless we draw a line in the sand today, CPS will keep using a broken school actions process that produces arbitrary and outright racist decisions. Right. And over time, the idea that we all deserve an equal shot at education, no matter the color of our skin or the money in our bank account, will be eaten away by the very institution that is supposed to be our cornerstone of equal opportunity, our public school system. Instead of giving us an equal ground to build from, CPS will produce and reproduce the racial gaps that harm us all. You'll soon hear from some of the parents and community members of NTA who traveled all the way here to attend today's hearing. They didn't ask for this. They are not happy to be here. Since last February, they have spent their nights, their holidays, and their weekends meeting, talking, and organizing to try and make sense of Decision. They dared to push back. When they were ignored, they decided to go to court. 
we believe that future parents like them should not have to stay up all night or lawyer up just to keep their schools closing. Right. Today, we'll ask the judge to issue an emergency measure to stop the closure of NTA. Yeah. At the very same time, CPS is asking the judge to dismiss our suit. We know that equity and fairness of our public education hangs in the balance of today's decision. Thank you.
for CPS in far season in many ways that are apparent. As a parent, I depend on NTA in many ways, and so do all of us. Yes. We depend academically, medically, and athletically. Yes. My daughter is challenged academically in NTA. I know that once she leaves eighth grade, as many of the other eighth graders, she will be prepared for a journey to college. I know that. We all receive endless support from our teachers. I personally, as well as other people, am depending on NTA to provide dental care to my child because I don't have dental coverage. My daughter is on the swim team. I don't have to be there to get her a swim practice. The teachers and staff make sure she gets there. What I have and what all of us have at NTA is trust. Right. Yes. 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 So to think that this one plus school, with all its greatness, this greatness that can be measured, and things that can be measured, was put on the CPS chopping block, infuriates me. It angers everyone to yes. it. Yes. 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 In 2013, the school closing report released by University of Chicago on the 2013 closing in 2018 of this year, they studied this and found that those kids didn't do any better. Those kids that were evicted from their schools in 2013 did worse. They still lagged behind. CPS had no response to this report. There wasn't an apology to those black and brown children saying, we made a mistake. That's right. So now they are set to try and close this one plus school knowing what's going to happen to our babies. They know they're going to lag behind somewhere else. They don't care. And they are still going ahead with this closing. That is ridiculous and that is unacceptable. Yes. Yes. So why are they still doing this? We have no other choice to say this is a racist decision. Yes. We are one plus. Where can we go? We are at the top. Who is going to give us a better education? What is the excuse? The excuse back then was they're going to a higher level school. We are higher level. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. So today, I am here because no black child in CPS should feel that they have no importance. I am here today to say that we should not be at the whim of CPS administrators who decide that those black children don't get the same rights. I am right. here today to tell my second grader that her academic success does not depend on her being a white second grader in an all-white school. This is ridiculous. My second grader asked me two weeks ago, can she graduate NTA as an eighth grader? What made her ask that question on that day? All of our children are feeling the anxiety yes. of this movement, of their decision to close our school. Yes. The outcome of this hearing today, and I hope the outcome of this decision will allow me to look at my daughter's face and say, yes, you can graduate from NTA as an eighth grader. Yes. Yes. low-income black kids 
gets the resources to perform off the charts and has a building that's nearly full. What we didn't know at the time is that this would not be enough to protect our community. Never in Chicago's history has CPS come for a school like ours until they did. Closing a school like NTA means that no school will ever be safe from the threat of closure if the students in that school are seen as disposable, if the students in that school are black. Chicago United for Equity grew out of the belief that it is our responsibility to ensure that not only must we win our fight for NTA, we must also ensure that our city's government can never do to another community what was done to us. No community should ever learn about the future of their school in a newspaper headline. No community should have to collect 1,200 signatures just to earn a meeting with their elected officials. No community should have to organize weekly meetings for over two years to simply preserve their right to exist. This is what it takes to fight for existence in Chicago public schools. It takes hours and hours of unpaid organizing, unpaid labor. And what's most disheartening about the doors we knocked on and the signatures we asked for and the meetings we attended is how damn routine this all is. Have you heard that saying, absolute power corrupts absolutely? Right. Well, the opposite is also true. Absolute powerlessness corrupts absolutely. In the last two years, I've knocked on doors from 16th Street to Bronzeville, organized dozens of meetings about NTA, and I've met hundreds of people. But it does not matter who I talk to, whether they're parents or elected officials. It doesn't matter how sympathetic they are to our cause, how much they believe in what we're doing. They tell us about the same thing. I don't have the power to fix this. It's a done deal. Now, everything I know about Chicago tells me that it's not a done deal. That's right. It's not a done deal. Throughout this campaign, we have learned that Chicago was built to resist our power. Chicago was built to preserve the power of a few on the backs of the many. This case is about changing that. We are not just here to keep one amazing school open. We are here to chip away at a political system built to ignore our voices. Say that. Say that. Say that. Say it again. We're not just here to keep NTA open. We are here to make sure our voices are heard. In the last several months, we've seen how our efforts to change this political system have spoken to a broader audience. People across Chicago, everyday people, know that our communities are in trouble. Whether your school is closing or your rent is going up, or you see these impacts even if you don't feel them yourself, you know that this is not what a just democracy looks like. We're here to change that. Shutting our schools down. 
10 days out of, 10, 10 hours out of day, save the kid life. Because it's something to do. Because right now they just standing on the corner and got nothing to do. Nobody ain't got nothing to offer. Won't even go to the corner and say, son or daughter, let me take you back to school. Do you have a high school diploma? Do you have an eighth grade diploma? It's about our kids, it ain't about us, y'all. Right. Right. Save our children. Right. Save our school. We leave with much love. Much love. <laughs> Get the rope. 